The power of network and communications in f fostering public sector innovation and transformation. Uh, well, I'll just make a start. My name is Damien Batterson. I work with DIWA, Department of Education, Employment and Workplace Relations. Um, I must say first up that this is a very uh, impromptu, uh, probably ill-prepared uh, session that I've got. So I've, I don't have any slides, but I thought I might just, um, I thought it might be interesting to have a little bit of a conversation around social media monitoring. And uh, <clears throat> I guess from a selfish perspective, I'm, I'm interested to, to, to learn or to talk to, to meet others that may be uh, exploring social media monitoring, maybe perhaps are doing it. Um, I'm not an expert. Uh, but I thought it's a, a worthwhile conversation to have. Um, so with that as an intro, I, if I could just uh, maybe start off with a little bit of audience interaction. Um, can I just have a show of hands from, from the audience, people who actually consider themselves to have a clue what social media monitoring is? Okay, so maybe half. Uh, if just keep your hand up if you're actually doing it actually using social media monitoring tools to, to monitor social media. Okay, so maybe, maybe about a third. Sorry? Um, maybe we can w use this session to come to a definition of social media monitoring, but I'll, I'll try to cover that off. I, I thought I'd focus on, on uh, you know, what is social media monitoring. So we'll start off, I guess, with a bit of a definition. Um, you know, how, how do we do social media monitoring? But more importantly, I think, is the question, why? Why would you do, why would you do social media monitoring? Um, if I did prepare some slides, I think I'd put up a slide now and I'd have three words on it. One would be facilitate, one would be participate, and one would be observe. And why I'd pick those three words is because I think, you know, a lot of organisations starting exploring what is social media, what should we be doing about it? And, you know, all too often it seems like, you know, the question narrows down to should we have Facebook? Should we be on Facebook? Uh, should we be on Twitter? And of course, well, we should do YouTube, right? So, you know, let's start off with that. And I think that's really, um, you know, a very narrow definition of, of what social media is to begin with. Um, and I think what's important is to sort of, I guess, broaden that definition and have an understanding that it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, so having a Facebook, having a YouTube, having a Twitter account, I put them in the, in the realm of facilitate. We are actually hosting a social media presence. Uh, we've created it and we obviously expect people are going to come to us. And we'll control the conversation, uh, we'll, put, we'll push our messages through that, and I, I'd say, you know, this is a this is within the realm of you know us owning this platform, us owning this presence, and, and making people come to us. But I think it's also important to realise that there's lots of other activities that we can be doing in social media. One of those, and I'd say this second world here would be participate. So as much as you know, where is that conversation happening? Where is this, what are, what are others doing? What other social media uh, platforms or places or conversations are happening that others are facilitating that we can actually just be participants in? So go along, turn up, and actually be just another another person attending, uh, another person, uh, another uh, party as participant in that social media conversation. And the third one is about observe. So no, we're not going to create it, we're not going to build it, we're not going to try to own it. Uh, we're not even necessarily going to say anything in that forum. We're not necessarily going to participate, but we may well just go there to look, go there and see what's actually being said. And I think that's. Um, uh, the part of social media monitoring, uh, if we're getting, and I'll, I think I'll come back to this, um, you know, more about the question why, is about understanding, you know, social media monitoring by observing the social web and by observing what those conversations are that are happening out there in the social web can help us to decide, make those sorts of decisions. Is this something that we need to create? Is it, is it a town hall that we need to make that people need to come to? Or are these conversations already happening elsewhere and we can use social media monitoring to find those conversations and uh, you know, through that, again, decide whether or not we actually engage with it, whether we respond, or whether we participate, or whether we simply just watch what's happening. Um, <clears throat> and I think I'll come back to that. Um, so if we're talking about what is social media monitoring, uh, and try to piece together what is the definition, what is social media monitoring? What we're talking about is literally plugging in to the social web. So out there, all these conversations that are happening, of course there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's tweets, there's posts, there's comments, um, you know, there's uh, comments on mainstream news, there's uh, blogs and forums and so forth. All of these things are collectively known as mentions, so a social mention. So, uh, you know, I guess the common term for all of these things, whether it's tweet, post or otherwise, we're calling them mentions. 
Now, wouldn't it be fantastic if we could have some really good way, easy way to plug in to get an aggregated view of what are all of those mentions around a particular topic? And whether that's a keyword, uh, you call it a subject, call it a topic or a theme, whatever. Uh, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about tools that we can plug into the social web, we can get an aggregated view of, of what all of those social mentions are around a topic or around a keyword. Um, and obviously through that, we can trawl through that uh, to get a sense of what are people saying, what is the sentiment around that. Um, these tools get you know, quite sophisticated to be able to measure sentiment. Some of those algorithms are thrown off a little bit by Australian sarcasm. Um, but, you know, what, what's the general sentiment around this? Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, what, are the, what are the sort of, um, you know, uh, reoccurring themes around conversations in the social web? But more than that, we're also talking about being able to identify actual places. So where are those conversations happening? Now, we work in DWA, for example, one of our, I guess, um, part of our portfolio is around uh, childcare, childcare rebate, for example. Now, where are people talking about childcare rebate? So let's plug in, let's you know, use that keyword and see, see where people might be talking about it. Now, we didn't realise, but there's a particular blog, and I, actually I don't know the name off the top of my head, maybe it's something like Mum and Bub's Club or something like this. And there's several blogs where, you know, um, where mothers join, uh, gather together online share experiences and talk about stuff about babies. Now, uh, you know, social media monitoring tools give us the ability to be able to find, in aggregating those mentions, to be able to drill down then and say, well, not just, uh, you know, what are the mentions, but where are they happening? So we didn't know that here's, here's a list of 55 blogs wherein this keyword has been mentioned, and there may be a bit of a buzz around that. So again, we can go and actually identify that these conversations are happening. So we could then probably go and participate, for example. Go and actually visit those blog sites. Go and look at the, the, the themes, look at the conversations that are happening, and again, maybe decide, well, is this something that we could engage with? Or are we just happy to be able to read that, to observe, if you like, and, and of course then from that we can gather certain intelligences uh, that might then inform our uh, decision making. Uh, we may, uh, you know, for example, change some, some element of our service delivery, influence policy and whatever else. So by doing nothing other than going there and reading those blogs, going to those places and finding them. Um, look at another level, or a little bit more granular, uh, you start to identify exactly who. Who are those people? Who are those identities? What are those Twitter handles that are starting to have an influence around particular topics? So you can, through these tools again, you can not only see what they're saying, you can see who, who's saying it, drill down into their profiles, see how many people are following them, see what's the network and, uh, and around them, see who are, who are the people and the audiences that are actually listening to these people. So we describe these as influencers or champions. So again, if we can find who those people are that have got following, uh, you know, we may you know, find ways or strategize ways of engaging through them, through that particular forum, uh, in, in that particular platform, or take an offline strategy go and talk to them, go and start forming, you know, do real stakeholder engagement, identify these people who are influencers, go and talk to them, um, give them a bottle of red, um, tell them to say nice things, tell them to influence, you know, but this is an offline strategy uh, to, to be able to get closer to these people that maybe can then penetrate those audiences uh, and so forth. So what is it? Um, I, I won't try to wrap that few minutes into a definition, but it's about, uh, you know, Finding where the conversations are happening, finding out who are, who, who, is, who are the people that are having an influence, finding out what the conversations are and learning from that uh, and you know, using that for a basis for our decision making, using that to help us to strategise our social media engagement, using that to help us decide if it's something, you know, maybe we go out and do some observation, do some monitoring and we actually find that nobody's talking about these things or that there are no forums there, or there are no blogs, or there are no places. Well, that might be an indication for us to say, well, let's make that place. Let's create that conversation, and then, uh, you know, to fill that void. If we go out and say, you know, let's start off with making a Facebook without having a look, well, we didn't know there's a blog here and another blog, and they're doing this, there's a group there, and there's a group there. Why would we try to duplicate that when we can go and just simply by going turning up, we can just, you know, participate in that and or observe what's happening. So. Um, what is it? Now, if I look at uh, the question how, 
uh, start turning a focus now to um, technology, what tools are actually out there and available. And there's a pretty broad spectrum, I think, from you know, free tools, and in that you think about Google Analytics, Google Alerts and so forth, uh, things like within Hootsuite where you can do basic reporting, uh, right up to the Rolls-Royce end of you know, enterprise solutions, paid, um, uh, paid solutions. Uh, where you're engaging a, a, a provider to give you a very a, you know, much more comprehensive suite of, mo uh, of monitoring tools. And in that spectrum, uh, in that range, we're talking about uh, you know, the likes of Radiant 6 or Buzz Numbers or um, uh, Meltwater Buzz. And you know, again, I'm not here to endorse any of those, but these are the sort of uh, spectrum of, of tooling available. A lot of people sort of think, well, you know, we've got free stuff, we can go and see how many followers we've got. We get that weekly update from Facebook that tells us what's our, what is it, the extended reach or whatever, multiplied by, multiplied by, you know, is that, isn't that enough uh, to get a sense of how our social media presence is going? And again, that's a very narrow view of, you know, doing social media monitoring. We've got a Facebook, how many followers have we got? What's our goal? Well, let's try to double that next month. Very, you know, I guess ill-informed or very uh, sort of immature metrics on trying to gauge the success of your social media um, objectives. What's the difference um, between paid and free tools? Uh, I think some of the key points to emphasise there are around um, a point in time versus uh, you know, some sort of longitudinal view of, of, of data. So typically the free tools give you, you know, what's happened today or in, in, in the moment. Uh, not so easy to look over trends and look over time, look at that back data and so forth. So that's, a, I guess, a, a pretty fundamental um, distinction. Uh, another one is that, um, you know, a lot of free tools uh, do individually good stuff, but how do you then get a much more aggregated view uh, from these different tools? And the argument suggests that if you, you know, if you added a Google Alerts with an analytics and with the one of these and one of those and one of these, then you've pretty much got the set. Um, well, that is an argument, but obviously the, the more integrated, the more you know, one-stop shop for your social media monitoring is a pretty good argument as well to look at those more sophisticated tools. Um, the other end, uh, I think, which is much more interesting and in the potential of this sort of tooling is not just in terms of the obs observation, you know, what's happening, who's saying what, and, you know, some nice graphs and a pie chart here and so forth, a few nice numbers and a bit of colours, makes a nice report. But the other side of it is, um, I guess, looking at, um, I, I guess, uh, well, talking about innovation, uh, really looking at uh, an, a potential influence on uh, re-engineering our business processes. So changing the way we do things. And I think in the, in the context of what's our front line of government, uh, and really looking at sort of empowering our line areas, those subject matter experts that are out there, either you know, creating or formulating policy and or programs and delivering that, uh, wouldn't it be good if they were much more empowered to have a view on what the conversation is, rather than being you know, at the end of an escalation from the, from the call centre through the clearance process to find out what the question is, to then try to get an answer back. And it really, I'm, I get excited about this idea of shortening that um, that uh, I guess feedback loop or that uh, clearance approval process, so that we can actually respond closer to real time with uh, with the community, with the questions, with the issues that are actually, you know, um, currently in debate. So, how can social media monitoring tools uh, help to to close that gap? Uh, and again, I think you you need to um, to start to explore what what are these extra capabilities or, or really the the full-blown Rolls-Royce solutions offering here, and, and I don't think uh, many organisations, particularly non, not many government organisations, are really ready for this yet. But certainly to um, start uh, learning about and/or you know finding out what these capabilities are. So what are we talking about? What we're talking about now is we we can aggregate all of these views and mentions now into a stream. We can have that in our dashboard. We can literally sit there like with our mission control and be watching the social web. At the same time, we can start to filter those mentions and be able to start analysing and deciding on, well, are these things that we should respond to? If there are conversations that maybe uh, you know, uh, pro 
promulgating misinformation or there's people that are wondering how to find things and whatever else. Uh, if there's uncertainty and we have, the, we have the answers, why wouldn't we then go in there and correct that? If people are tweeting that, you know, I can't find something, uh, why wouldn't we direct them to it and give them a link to it? So we can pull out of those mentions, we can find things that we can actually then quite, quite easily and quite quickly respond to. And I think in terms of, if you draw a parallel with what we have as far as, you know, our knowledge, uh, our knowledge base or our, our call centre Q&A scripting and so forth, if we can trust a part-time uni student with a half a week's training to get on a phone and start answering questions from the public uh, you know, about our organisation, and they, they do that by reference to a, a knowledge base or a, a, a Q&A, why wouldn't we be able to use that same Q&A to quickly respond to questions or issues that are in social media? So uh, this is the sort of vision, you know, line area, subject matter experts, they're doing the job, they're doing the program, we're writing the policy, creating the, uh, so forth. Uh, they're very close to the conversation that's happening in the social web. They can observe that, they can watch that, and they can pick the points of engagement. And what these tools then enable us to be able to do is then start thinking about workflow. So we can watch our stream of content and our feeds, we can choose the ones that we're going to ignore. We can choose the ones that we're going to respond to. We can then actually route those into workflow. So yes, flag, flag, yep, do something about, yep, ignore, yes, right. Filtering through this sort of uh, stream of, uh, of mentions, follow or route these through workflow. These go to the social media team, these go to Q&A, these go to the you know, the workplace guys for an answer and so forth. And they can help to then um, schedule and route that workflow. Um, Going further, you know, one of the headaches we have around thinking about having conversations with the public through social media, you know, decision making, influencing policy, records keeping. So we've had a conversation, yes, that may have influenced the decision, yes, we need to actually maintain a record of that. Uh, at the moment, you know, tweets flying here, there, Facebook posts, you know, we've, we've got it cleared to post the initial post, but now we've said, they've said, we've said, she said, who said what, what happens to all of that content and how do we then start to uh, you know, capture that? Um, should we capture everything? Do we need to capture every tweet that we put out, that they say something about? What about the ones we didn't know about? All these sort of questions around you know, capturing the content and then storing it as a, as a record. Um, you know, again, these tools can then help us to do that as well. So we've, we've used the workflow, we've routed this stuff, we've actually captured all of that content uh, and these can be stored, captured, flagged, tagged, whatever, um, and then, or harvested, if you like, and then potentially, you know, export that to a spreadsheet and save that and trim. Um, you know, that full life cycle of the content, the conversation, the storage, and, and, the, and the records keeping. But um, going a little bit deeper into that as well, we're talking about, you know, CRM. So what's the history of the conversation or customer relationship management, right? Which is basically, we're talking simply, um, keeping track of the conversations that we have with our stakeholders over time. So we've got, we're tweeting here, we're having a conversation with a particular Twitter handle about something that they happen to be an influencer, they happen to keep coming back and forth, whatever else. Um, but again, these tools can help us then to, you know, act as, as, as a CRM. So we can go back through conversations, we can actually track the history of uh, conversations over time, with, with, be they with the communities, be they with the individuals and so forth. So without going uh, too deep, and as I said, I'm, I don't profess to be an, an expert in this tooling, but I think it's interesting to say, start envisaging uh, or, or start inquiring about what these tools can do beyond just how many followers do we have this week and you know, what's the spike on. You know, a very simple view of, of social media monitoring can be expanded to, to include a view of you know, managing the way we deal with, um, not just with social media, but actually public engagement and how we actually um, use those tools to support that as well. And then of course going, I, I guess, from the, uh, to make a loop out of that, it would look good in a slide with a circle, which I hadn't, didn't make, but you know, it would sort of come back in, a, in that loop and these tools obviously then help us to, um, to do the monitoring, uh, leads to the reporting, leads to the evaluation uh, and so forth. So I'm just getting the wind up here. I'm just going to tie it back to this idea, as I said before, at the start. You know, social media is not just about, you know, let's have a Facebook. It's a, 
it's just as much about deciding you know, what are our points of engagement in that, where do we facilitate, where do we participate, where do we just observe. Um, and then I'd put my contact details up on a slide. And, <laughs> and does anybody have any questions or comments? We actually don't have time to kick off with questions oh. this time around. Sorry, Damien. If you want to have a chat with Damien, um, grab him afterwards, I suppose. He'll be around. Um, a round of applause for Damien. Thanks.